लेट्स टॉक माइंड सेंस और मन की बातें तो होती रहेंगी कीप वॉचिंग माइंड सेंस मैं हूँ आपकी होस्ट सविता चैन and today in our studios we have a very young and talented beautiful, beautiful. Oh my gosh. Um, you know <laughs> uh, guest ashley kumar welcome to the show ashley thank you so much for having me thank super you. excited and thank you for taking out the time to come and be on our show and i know you bring a lot of um, information um first of all I'd like to ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself where you were born raised up to what you are doing now sure mm-hmm. Um so 27 years old. Wow. Um I come from a Fijian dad and a <laughs> South Indian mom. So they're both immigrants here in Canada and mm-hmm. I come from a very beautiful diasporic family. You know, I've got a Catholic family and I've also got a Hindu family, so I was yeah. born and brought up in beautiful cultures. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um I yeah, I was born here in Vancouver and I kind of grew in the, in the community. I went to a private Catholic school with wow. a lot of different Asians, so I got to kind of grow and learn different cultures. Mhm. Um, I did a lot of traditional dance to kind of mm-hmm. keep me rooted with my mm-hmm. South Indian side, mm-hmm. um, and I did martial arts <laughs> as well. So I've got a little bit of both. I've got like the tomboyish side of me, <laughs> but also the very girly side of me. Um, but yeah, so I did that. I studied um, English literature in mm-hmm. Kwantlen and kind of pursued a potential journey on teaching. And I've kind of merged and, and married all my skills together, and now I kind of work as a first responder. So tons wow. of tons of finding myself as well but yeah so quickly you almost told us so many things we have done <laughs> in like in a just sentence, a, in just, just a sentence. <laughs> yes. so let's go back a little bit actually sure. so going to private school mm-hmm. uh talk to us about your experience going to private school yeah it's very mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. being an indian woman going mm-hmm. to a private school so in uniform uniform and, like skirt kilt mm-hmm. sweater mm-hmm. i mean i took pride in the way that i looked yeah. but of course not going to a public school i didn't have to worry about the yes. top trends and like <laughs> everyone looked the same yeah so i went to st patrick's mm-hmm. absolutely phenomenal school mm-hmm. nothing but good things to say about it mm-hmm. got a great environment great learning experience so um very nice to learn cuz my mom's a catholic mm-hmm. so having that as part of my roots i was brought up in the catholic faith went to church every saturday with my mom i actually also did altar serving and lecturing in my parish and i you know with covid right now it's very different but we go over okay, what does can. that mean so when you're a lector you go up with the with the procession and you end up reading the word of god okay. in front of in front of the parish mm. so i'm so glad you're sharing it because yeah. actually i do know <laughs> also knows all the hindu rituals and the yes yeah all of that stuff yes. too like you take a lot of pride on your dad side of the uh, absolutely the, yeah. and that's what i love about mm. coming from a diasporic family is mm. is you have those cultures like my yeah. sister and i both we did pujas mm-hmm. from the minute we were born up until like just recently we had one and yeah. close intimate family and mm. i sat there and i knew what i was doing because mm-hmm. i i take pride in my faith mm-hmm. and people I guess kind of the conversation with that is oh how can you be a catholic and how can you be a hindu and I'm like I just believe in the power of love and the culture mm-hmm. of love and you mm-hmm. know I love what I what I do I I call it from the universe I don't have a name but yeah. I I kind of I worship both I pray for both and mm-hmm. and it's like I have I have more in my arsenal you know I've got the hindu side I've got like the 13 million gods that we have and I've got like <laughs> all the saints <laughs> and I'm like I got I have the more you power to me I've got everything <laughs> yes. you know what I love that I love that yeah. and I can say that is because um my older son he's a baptized christian mm-hmm. born again christian then my daughter married a muslim yep my son married a punjabi yeah so we ha- we celebrate everything in our family it just gives me more reasons to celebrate exactly. more reasons to you know to accept us as one exactly so I, yeah i love that about you yeah. know Nishmash i'm lucky culture. we're lucky yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the the more the more prayer the more power the better right yeah so so when did um, you start going to the traditional bharatanatyam the dance So I started really early um I want to say I kind of started maybe around I was maybe 8 or 9 mm-hmm. um and I did that up until I'd say 20 I I was doing it up until I'd say consecutively until 2010 mm-hmm. but I did graduate from it and I did I performed an Arangetram which is like the graduation ceremony mm-hmm. in 2000 and 8 or mm-hmm. 2009 actually mm-hmm. so over 10 years of classical dance mm-hmm. absolutely loved it like mm-hmm. to express my culture and my religion through song and through music and through art form was just mm-hmm. was really important to me and mm-hmm. 
yeah, I just, I was doing that for a really long time, and I also coincided that with the martial arts, so <laughs> it was just like a bridge between two. Like, what yeah. did you do How? for martial arts? <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. Um, I'm still doing martial arts. Okay. I've been, I started when I was 10. Yeah. 27 okay, we'll now. Put down. <laughs> I know, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, I actively practice it. I love, I love the fitness industry, and I love mm-hmm. kind of, that's like my self-care, mm-hmm. but I was doing it, and I still do it and actively practice it. I actually have a third-degree black belt, so mm-hmm. I've been doing it for a really should, long what, time. Uh, we, we know who to call. Exactly. <laughs> Speed dial. You have where, where, we need, where we need some action. Yeah. Yeah. I'm afraid to call up, but I think because if I'm the one in the wrong, I'm going to get that. You know? <laughs> exactly. I might not get the defense I'm looking for. I'll, I've got you. Don't worry. She's got um, back. I, I'm, I'm putting myself with her. <laughs> She's got her back. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. So, Ashley, I know you mentioned your sister. Yes. So, uh, speak to us a little bit about your family. I yeah. know you had mentioned your mom and dad about your so only one. Yes, Other sibling? biologically I have one uh, <laughs> younger sister by five years. She's uh-huh. the absolute love of my life. Mm-hmm. Anything and everything I do in my life is for her. And, you know, just for her to just be proud of me and, and what I do, it's just like, that's uh-huh. the that's the utmost goal for me. I have no one else that I, I turn to in my problems of needs or when I'm stressed or nervous or excited. The first person to think about is her. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just lucky to have that person in my back, in my corner. And no matter mm-hmm. what I do in life, right or wrong, she's mm-hmm. there. So... Yeah, really lucky. So because I know you, I know um, your younger sister also followed into the traditional dance. Yes. But what I don't know, did she go into martial arts too? No. Okay. She actually pursued soccer. <laughs> oh. She did a lot of soccer. So she's got the kicking skills. She's got a strong leg. But no, she she's also very athletic. She uh-huh. goes to the gym, really fitness oriented. Uh-huh. She's also um, on the route of becoming a first responder as well. She's mm-hmm. in a nursing school and she's doing a really great job. Mm-hmm. I'm super That's proud of her. So yeah. we've got first responders, essential workers in my family and... Um, just believe in the art of gratitude and, and giving back and living our lives in service. So I'm really lucky I've got that as really. And is that from childhood, like your family, your parents, um, their way of being? Yes. Um, you know, like we're seeing more and more in, you know, right now, especially presently, all kind of the downfall, especially of the younger people, you know, mm-hmm. the shootings uh, um, and the violence and the gang violence that's going on. So, and, and you're young too, so it's like, you know, we we think about is it was it their childhood or their upbringing or parents don't get enough time. Um, how do and looking at you, you know, very confident and very um, grateful and this mm-hmm. positive attitude and doing mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was your family environment that kind of built that support for you and you carried on. Yeah, definitely. My both my parents came from nothing. They're mm-hmm. very hardworking individuals, mm-hmm. and for them to leave what they knew and to come here and start mm-hmm. fresh and. And just become the people that they are. I have nothing but admiration yes. and, and respect for them. Like, like I said, everything I do, I do for them yeah. and for my family. so selfless like mm-hmm. you could call him two o'clock three o'clock in the morning for absolutely nothing and he'll answer the phone yeah. my mom is the same way she just gives so so much of herself to everyone and and just seeing that grow up and mm-hmm. and have my sister and I'd be able to witness that was just how we wanted to live our lives like mm-hmm. the fact that we've got a roof over our head clothes on our back food yes. on our table like what more do we need we have each other yeah. and so you know I, I see that and I witness my parents do that and they're they're older now but Still very young, don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just ha- just seeing that and, and witnessing them and, and how much they just want to give back to people because of where they came from is exactly what I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know? And so that's what I live my life. I live my life in complete service and complete gratitude. So totally in my upbringing. I think you, I was going to ask you, so can you tell me in one sentence, which I don't have to ask you, you will put it in a sentence of what keeps you grounded, but I think you already answered that. Absolutely, you know, so yeah. Like, Parents uh, and sister mm-hmm. and just... My circle is very small, mm-hmm. um, don't have a lot of friends just because growing up I was never, I, I look confident now, but growing up I was very shy and I was, you know, I was kind of bullied you growing were? up. Yeah, okay. I mean you would know. <laughs> no, but I was, I, was, I was shy and kind of bullied growing up and just I was different than everybody else and so hence the, the dance and the martial arts and just kind of, you know, growing into my shell and so keeping myself grounded, just both my parents, just I look at them and I remind, this my, that's my why, see my sister and that's my why, like I don't yeah. have... Like, that's everything that I need. I am so grateful for that. You know, I'm glad you bring that up because I'm recently reading, once you figure out what's your why, 
that gives you a you know that puts you on that path to where you want to head absolutely to, you know destination so <clears throat> so now you are in a first responder yes now let's talk about that like how, yeah like why is that why mean? <laughs> why are you there it's been um a very interesting journey. I did I did a lot of my schooling in English literature. I uh -huh. wanted to be an English teacher. Mm -hmm. There's a program called Teachers with No Borders, so I wanted to be able to teach to children who didn't have access to teaching or, or, oh, okay. or, or yeah. English. And of course I pursued that, and then kind of along the way I, I knew that I wanted to give back to the community, so I started volunteering with the local victim services mm -hmm. um, program, and I started volunteering with a couple different agencies, kind of finding my way with crisis intervention and, and responding to different calls. and it just kind of became something I fell in love with. Like, mm -hmm. to be able to exercise empathy and compassion on a daily basis, but then to take what I love, and that's giving back to the community, and to be able to do that with people who are suffering and people who are hurting, and just having that person who's completely out of the blue, mm -hmm. but is genuine. I hope in, in, a, in our conversation you can tell that I give, oh, yes. I speak with my heart, and I have absolutely <laughs> nothing but good things to say, but I ended up falling in love with that. So I left my, my journey to become an English teacher, and I followed my calling to become a first responder and mm -hmm. and the universe literally put it in my put in my hands and I've just been running with it. I work for two really amazing organizations and and I work with members of the public mm -hmm. and it, I bridge gaps between negative stigmas and and public because I consider myself a member of the public. Mm -hmm. And if I can create a really good connection, then I know that the resources I can provide will also be reflected on as a good connection. Yeah. And so I do that and and yeah, I just kind of merged it together and now I guess I fall under the category of first responder, yeah. So Ashley, you mentioned um, victim services. Yes. So I, I have um, been a member of um, an organization doing victim services work too. You know what, when I was in that role, um, like I couldn't separate myself from mm -hmm. the role. It was, I was not happy. I loved what I did, but I couldn't do self-care. Uh, you know, and that is one of the reasons I left is because yeah. I think, you know, as far as, um, first of all, I got into a working with a lot of um, uh, domestic violence, you know, right. people in domestic violence, but then a couple of cases came around where the children were involved mm -hmm. and I couldn't handle it. I couldn't go to sleep. I couldn't like, oh, I can't, I don't, I want to know what happened, yeah. but I can't. I can't know what happened because I couldn't. What keeps you going? Like, how do you do yeah. this? I've been huh. I've been with the organization that I'm with for mm. just over five years now, mm -hmm. and you know, I my my supervisors, my team, they're just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But my ability to disconnect is also very heightened, mm -hmm. and that's something I think that I I can credit to my parents. Mm -hmm. You know, they come home from a really hard day and they see myself or my sister, and it's just like the day doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And so I know that the minute I get into my car, mm -hmm. the minute the call ends. And sometimes the calls go on for, for mm -hmm. hours, but the mm -hmm. minute I get into my car, the minute I drive away, I completely turn everything off. Mm -hmm. I go to the gym. I call my sister. I remind mm -hmm. myself that I'm, I'm grounded, that I'm here mm -hmm. in the physical place, that I'm mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And so I do those things, and you know, sometimes 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, I like open the door to my parents' bedroom, just remind myself. And so my ability to remember my why mm -hmm. on an everyday basis allows me to continue in this workplace. I've got tons of self-care in play. Mm -hmm. I do martial arts actively, mm -hmm. go to the gym, like mm -hmm. to be outside. Mm -hmm. I like to cook. I like to eat. I like to eat. I can I like to cook, I like but, to I like eat, to but I like to eat more. Like to cook. I like to eat more. <laughs> I like to eating more, oh, definitely. But I, yeah. yeah, I like to cook too, but I just, I think I love... I like to eat more. I'm a foodie. Like, We're foodies. Yeah, that's just foodies, like a natural thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So just just a constant remember of those things and mm -hmm. and to know that that's what I'm doing it for. It's just it's so easy to disconnect now. Mm -hmm. I mean, at first, of course, you struggle with it because yeah. you're thinking about it when you go to sleep. You're like, I wonder how that call turned yeah. out, or or I wonder what's really going on. Or I really hope this person is is found guilty or found you know. And I and you you think about those things and it becomes repetitive, but it's also not in my like I can't control it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I don't dwell on things I can't control. No, mm -hmm. it's in it's in there. Whatever happens, happens. The universe will put it in its place. Mm -hmm. But for what I can control, I am absolutely in control of those things. My emotions, mm -hmm. the way my mind reacts to things. Mm -hmm. You know, who I'm talking to, who I keep in my circle. So that's how I kind of weigh it, and that's aids to the fact that I can disconnect from my workplace like that. I envy, I envy young women who are able to do that. You just told us you are 27. I'm twice your age, and I think I just about found that just around the corner a few years ago. That's okay, you're still young. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what, and I, I think you do bring up, I think, you know, you know the family supports we have and our uh, environment that we create and, you know, doing self-care stuff. And 
always checking in with yourself and our environment why are we doing what we are doing and how it's going to impact us and them you know for the other stuff so that, that is like that is very inspiring actually i must Thank say you. very inspiring mm -hmm. <clears throat> i feel like i could just keep talking about that because i mean you know when you sit there with a positive attitude with yeah. the stature you have and all those are very grounded very proud I am. Yeah, I so. mean, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. a young Indo-Canadian female. Mm -hmm. There's not many people mm -hmm. like me who work in the field that I work in. And mm -hmm. so if I can just, I mean, that's what I love about what you guys do and about talking, you know, cut the nonsense, let's talk about mindsets. And <laughs> it's super important yes. because I think there's a huge stigma with, with East Indian females and just any mm -hmm. woman in general, but especially the culture that I represent, mm -hmm. the ability to not talk about those things is huge. Mm -hmm. And so if I can just, you know, someone's watching this show and they're like, oh my gosh, I love what she says. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm listening to you and I'm like inspired by myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> because, yeah. you know, not only you embrace both cultures where a lot of, you know, people have difficulty, young kids have difficulty, which one do I follow? They tend to follow one or they feel out of place yeah. and they don't belong and that becomes a negative. But everything mm -hmm. seems like you turned into a positive and positive. Has done, you've done so well, so inspirational. Yeah. And I think, you know, when children do get bullied, they kind of feel this pressure. They need to adapt to the mainstream yeah. and not be too you know be um, embracing their own traditions and yeah. cultures they feel pressured but I think what you bring in Ashley is like a whole different dynamic of you know I tried to yeah. mm -hmm. I tried to I remember like mm -hmm. a lot of dress down days we would mm -hmm. have in my private school mm -hmm. everyone would be rocking like the newest jeans or like the nicest shoes and I'm like give me salwar let's put it on let's go to school uh -huh. like I was like so I, there was only two East Indian girls in my in my graduating class in a class of all different Asians and and, and mm -hmm minorities mm -hmm. but I was like any opportunity I could to to show off my culture to show off our style I mean we've got the best style I have to say <laughs> the <laughs> colors the jewelry like let me just say like I have to say it it's just, I take pride in it so I took every opportunity I could to do that mm -hmm. and I think that for me as much as I was worried at first you know like mm -hmm. what would people think of what I'm wearing and you know there's still moments that I have that everyone has those moments oh, yeah. we're not perfect we're not mm -hmm. the strongest individuals at some times and so I remember having those moments and I'm like you know what who cares like, who cares? Yeah, and like, I'm feeling threatened by that. Going to a Catholic school here, I'm going to be proudly showing off yeah. my, Wearing uh, a my <laughs> salwari. Yeah. Indian heritage. Like I graduated I in a sari. Oh. I put a sari on for my graduation, and I, mm -hmm. I walked down that center in a sari. I was like, absolutely, I'm going to wear this. So, Ashley, let me ask you, how was that accepted within your school? Like, going to a Catholic school environment, how was yeah. that accepted? I think naturally everyone when they're exposed to something new they don't mm -hmm. know how to react mm -hmm. you know levels of comfort mm -hmm. are very different for different people a lot of mm -hmm. the people that i went to school with in elementary school were the same people i went to school with in high school it was mm -hmm. just like across the street was my yeah. high school mm -hmm. um and so i'd wear certain things like when i was in elementary school people were like oh like it's a little too colorful or mm -hmm. maybe that's a little different and then eventually it just became like oh are you gonna wear a different color next week and i'm like yes <laughs> for sure but like i said it's levels of comfort yeah. you know like people Education and ignorance, I put hand in hand sometimes because when people aren't educated on a topic, they can be a little ignorant to it or they can be a little uncomfortable with it. And so when they ask me, like, well, why do you wear that? I'm wearing it because of this, this, this. Or I'm wearing it because mm -hmm. this is Diwali next week. Or I'm mm -hmm. wearing it because, you know, it's Raksha Bandhan. So it's like, there, there's different wow. things. I'm going to have you in my corner because I yeah. have decided when I retire on Fridays, I'm just going to, you know, put on my Indian stuff. And it doesn't matter what I'm doing. Absolutely. Even if I'm wine tasting, I'm doing it in my Indian yep. clothes, but my children think they, they're Double not going to... <laughs> dog walking, do it. Yeah, I'm, gonna do it right? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. My children think it's like, oh my god, I can't believe you're gonna do it. They make sure we are not around. So oh I'm my god! I'm so glad that yeah. you know, there's a young support. I'll wear it with you, <laughs> of course. Even my style, Girls like you know, I try and kind of keep it as Indian as possible. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm, I, I'm so um, inspired, and it's I'm so happy to hear you look at you even you sitting there and i think it's so important especially for young women today to have role models like you a young uh, confident woman like yourself for um because i mean i've met lots of women lots of young girls who are um you could say a model or for say but don't have the same level of confidence that you do so i mean you to do what resonates with you to be grat grateful um, I think we need more young women like you and uh, you. especially I think nowadays where everything is becoming more materialistic and about looks and uh, you know even I'm guilty of having our photos with filters, Snapchat filters, yeah, and all this stuff. We all do it. <laughs> so uh, normal, we've normalized all this and you know 
like when I was growing up, having uh, your nails done or eyelashes wasn't a thing. But now, when you look at the newer generation, it's a normal thing. Yeah. So all these things were changing with time, but it all comes down to how you feel inside about yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the whole being able to control and not be mm -hmm. able to control what you can and can't. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just really lucky. Like my, my pops, he's my at, like he's always my corner, my number one fan. I could say the same yeah. for my mom. Mm -hmm. But the both of them together, it was like whatever I wanted to do, I mean, within reason, of yeah. course, growing <laughs> up. But whatever I wanted to do, like, yeah, go ahead, do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they let me make my own mistakes yes. in a way that was protected. Like they loved me so much that I could explore in this love, mm -hmm. but also not have to step outside of it and mm -hmm. get hurt. Yeah. So they let me do that in, in their care and, and, and all that. So it was really good. You know what I really love about you, Ashley, is how real you are. Oh, thank you. Know, you. How real you are. Because I think, you know what, like Mina said, we all kind of sit behind this, all these filters and all those stuff because we want a presentation, the, how the world to view us. Yeah. But to view us who we really are. Like today I didn't straighten my hair, so this is my natural <laughs> But you look good. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. So you know what, like I feel like, you know what, um, it is, we, we, we are so impacted by the social media Absolutely. that we always feel like we need to do something to kind of fit in. But there's so much pressure to fit in. 100%. But where do we get the strength not to fit in, to stand out instead? How yeah. did you deal yeah. with some of How the pressure? How did you do it? Well, I, like I said, I, I was um, bullied growing up. Just mm -hmm. I was very odd. Like, who had the audacity to bully you? you? Know, like, I, look at I you was now. taller than everyone. <laughs> like, I was the tallest in my family, tallest in my class. <laughs> so it was just like, I just, you know, naturally, I just became that person that people looked at and they're like, oh, she's an easy target. Uh -huh. And that's okay. Everyone has grew up in their own mm -hmm. different ways. Mm -hmm. But it got to the point, like, I wasn't allowed to wear makeup mm -hmm. until maybe about grade 9, grade 10. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was like, oh, like, I'd wear it and start off with a little bit of eyeliner and kind of work my way down. I've got a full face on. But eventually it got to that point where I was just like, like who am I doing this for? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I'm spending so much money. Mm -hmm. Back then, drugstore was really expensive. But, like, yes. I'm like, I'm spending so much money on trying to fit in for who? Like, what am I doing this for? Mm -hmm. And I'm also not, like, I'm very fit. I consider myself very fit. But I also don't fit with what is in society today, what's on social media. And it got mm -hmm. to the point where I'm like, but I love me. Yeah. My parents love me. My sister loves me. And social media is Photoshop. Exactly. Right? So it's not reality. So it's but like, I, I don't. That. Yeah. yeah. I love me. Exactly. You know what? I think when you love you or I love me, nothing can nothing touch me. Nothing can touch me. Exactly. Absolutely. But when you don't love me, you love me. Yeah. And if you could be a one or a two, everybody touches you. Definitely. Yeah. I think we, mm -hmm. we a lot of people look for validation. Yes. And I, the only people I want validation from is my parents. Mm -hmm. I want it from my sister. When I get home and she's like, oh, like you had a really good day, Gigi, I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yep, yeah, okay, that's it. Icing on my cake, nothing else matters. Wow. And so it got to that point where I'm just like, I don't need validation from anyone except the people in my tight circle. Mm -hmm. And that has made a huge difference in what I do. Like so even I always read that quote, a woman yeah. who doesn't require validation is a very dangerous? I am very dangerous. <laughs> you are dangerous. But in a positive way, in a positive way, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, you know, and like you said, um, you know, fitting in and, uh, you know, being confident in yourself. Um, you know, there's been those quotes about, you know, you have to focus on yourself and keeping your circle tight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's so true. It's so true. Not, uh, you know, like, your confidence or who you are um, doesn't reflect on a bigger circle. Exactly. Uh, people that are confident, successful, grateful, we always hear, we always see they. you have a smaller circle, smaller group that you are tight and real with. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's very uh, good to hear. Um, yeah. Somebody young, young like you in mm -hmm. the studio talking about so much accomplishment and mm -hmm. being so Thank grateful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, what would you like to tell, especially the young uh, mm. women that are watching, young teenagers, young girls, you know, who are kind of finding themselves pressured by society, don't know which way to go or what to do, and you know, we all struggle with sadness, depression, and those kind of things. How to how to have this um, mindset? I think what's really important is is just to remember who you are. At mm. the end of the day, the only thing you can control is how you feel and what people say should not mean anything to that. Mm -hmm. And so if I can advocate for one thing, it's just be real to yourself. No one else cares, mm -hmm. yeah. and how you feel is the most important. I don't care what people think. And yes, you know, words hurt, even, like they do, mm -hmm. it's natural. Mm -hmm. But at the end, like it's just words. Mm -hmm. Like when people comment on Instagram, turn the comments off. You yeah. have that power, you're in control of it. And so if I can advocate for that, just be real to who you are, be true to yourself, 
nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. And just a constant reminder of that, if that's a message that I can give, then I will advocate for that, I will say it, and I'll keep saying it, but the best, the best version of you mm -hmm. is to just be you, yes. and that's it. And my question is, Ashley, we're coming up very close to our time, yes. a few more minutes left. Where do, do we see Ashley going in the next five years? Where yeah, do you see Ashley? Future plans. Yeah, what's yeah. your plans? And what are plans? And also, if there's something else you're passionate about, which you want to pursue? I'm, yeah. I'm definitely passionate about being a first responder, like whether mm -hmm. that's in law enforcement, whether that's as a paramedic, whether mm -hmm. that's as fire, mm -hmm. just anything in crisis intervention even. Mm -hmm. Just following that path. I mean, whatever happens, happens, and it's for a reason. Mm -hmm. But I know that my, my life is to live it in service mm -hmm. and, and w in whatever way. So kind of in the next five years, want to grow mm -hmm. as a person. Like, I'm 27, and I think that I've, I've got a lot left in life for me, and oh, I have yes. a lot more people to touch and a lot more people to, to, to fight for and to be there for. And so my goal is in the kind of next five years is to grow in my current position and kind of eventually move forward in different units and different, you know, I, I guess I wouldn't say members of the public, but different um, teams. Mm -hmm. You know, like I want to be able to work with people on the downtown east side, but then I also want to work with people um, in Surrey with the Surrey Women's Center. I want mm -hmm. to also be able to work with, you know, you know, success or, or people or like Saskatchewan that. Saskatchewan, exactly. Or like I that or go to Saskatchewan <laughs> to with the Mounties or like pursue, yeah. you know, I do, whatever it is. But you know, mm -hmm. I know that my life is to live it in service. And whatever the universe, whatever the, the creator decides to put in my path, it's meant for me, and I'll take it, and I'm going to run with it. So, you know, look out for me the next five years, definitely. You're oh, going to yes. see me on things, but... We're gonna, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to stalk you now. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Just, you, know what, Kim, you know, we have been... Um, my Incense has been running for a year, so it's yes. like a, our one-year anniversary coming up, ah. or this month is our one-year anniversary. But you know what? In this one year, nobody has come on our show and goes, I'm 27. Really? Like no, and I'm not even saying 27. Nobody has actually said about their age, so I'm so oh. proud. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's how do that you are. Oh yeah. my gosh! Great no. job. 27 and growing. I'm ready. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And accomplish so much, and yeah, we're gonna you. see so much more of you. Yes. And you know what I like? Um, you keep saying that I'm. I want to live, giving service. Absolutely. And I think people that are in this field, they do it from the heart, and, yeah. and that really reflects from you. Thank so you. I want to thank you for coming to the studio. It's been such a delight. Well, thank <laughs> you for having me. I'm super excited. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. And until next time, this is your host, Mina Jay. Oh, my, who host, Sarita Chand.